Welcome, everyone, to the general gaming channel known as M12 Warthog Game. Hey guys, M12 Warthog Game here. I'm back with another episode of Strategy Guide, and we're on we're on part three. And today, we're gonna start out by more exploration with our with our galley, we're gonna work on the temple. This granary can be rushed, which I wanna do. Then I wanna get quickly building a workshop as that will permanently increase our our production. Now, for this one, hanging gardens will be done in three turns, which will be awesome as our studio will grow a lot. We'll be able to make use of many more tiles, getting us more science and more technology much faster. And after that, I believe we have that um, where we left off. I have navigation done in one turn, and if we are the first to research it, of course, we will get a galleon. And it looks like we do. Now, this unit can go in water, and I didn't select a technology. But um, from here, what it looks like is I could go for steam-powered, but I don't want that. I could go for invention, and the second I'm done building hanging gardens, I'm probably just going to build build a university, and then after that, I really don't need anything else for that city. It's pretty much all set. You could make it get more food, science, and production and whatnot if you need it, but you can spend the rest of the time just mostly making... Um, wonders, and especially ones such as the Manhattan Project Wonder. You definitely want to get that before anyone else. Because if someone can nuke your city, they have a bargaining chip over war. You go to war with them, chances are they're going to nuke you. And if they have democracy and they can't nuke you, chances are they're going to change their government so that they can nuke you. Because they can't nuke you. If they have democracy, even if you're at war with them, and that's the only time you can use your units. Sorry to say this, but that's how just how it is. Also looking for the... I'm also sort of hoping that I can find the Lost City of Atlantis and get like three techs. Now, Hanging Gardens, Babylon, and, or whatever... University got 13 production. The warriors are a bit outdated. What I'm going to do is put our army here. Then what I'm going to do is move this legion here. Now, the reason I'm doing this, and as far as I know, they have Zulu warriors. But here's the thing. That's fine if they be there. They're just trying to explore and see what's out here. Only problem I have is that they could see what I have, but that's fine. But the one thing that they definitely do not want them to do is to set up a village right here or a town. Because they'll think, oh, it's not that far away right here. And our town's just over here and it's going to screw us over and whatnot. So, um... Which I sort of did, but it isn't bad as what other people do. Like, I will kick people from my game if they deliberately set up a town near me. Like, their first villagers, they'll deliberately set it up onto the tile right next to my capital and fuck me over for, like, the whole game. I do not like people when they do that. Faster than you can say, oop, I'm sorry, you will be kicked if I'm the host of it. Which I don't usually play that much online anyway, because, like, we never have enough to fill a whole entire game. Let alone enough to even start one, so whenever I say, Hmm, I wonder if anyone's on that wants to play online. Puts no random lobbies available. No one else wants to play other than me, and I don't know. And the times that I do, I got a guy who speaks a completely different language babbling on about something. I can't even understand what the heck there's... Saying so, 50% more science from that city. That is actually something I can use. 
Now we get more production. Hit plus two for mountain tiles. So right now, we, plus three, I think, I don't know. We are making a lot. So what that means is that I can make a, a temple in five turns. Which we would have greater influence, especially because a capital is right here. That would be the best. <clears throat> I really do not like them being there. You know, that's just how things are. Okay. Oh my god. The Lost City of Atlantis. This is the best artifact in terms of technology victory if you're going for one. If you're going for it, you want to get this and use it as soon as you can. The second you find it, no. Do not let anyone do that. No, we will stick with democracy. That is the best one you can have in multiplayer. Now, we're going to focus on making gunpowder and whatnot. Okay, temple built. Building. This one's going to make a university. But I'd rather go for this. <clears throat> Courthouse as soon as possible. Then we go for university. <clears throat> I rushed a temple here. Now I'm going to make a market and then a bank. Now, what you guys know, may know, is that a library or market doubles. Market will double the money that you make off of trade or gold. Library doubles your science. Now, most of you are thinking when you get a library, when you get a university, or a bank, which quadruples it, that you think that you're getting six times because you have a market which doubles in a bank that quadruples it. But no, your bank pretty much replaces the market. If you go into a town and you look at it, it will say that it has replaced it. Which is something that is kind of useful. So we have feudalism, fundamentalism. No, we'll stick with democracy. And banking! It says a village has revealed the secret, but really it's because of this. Okay. So if I were to rush... This, it would say we no longer have a library. We have a temple in its place and so forth. So, not much more I can do except for explore the waters and find what's out there. Knowing what other sieves are around is a good thing. I think I may have stumbled upon another Indian um, town. That is perfectly fine. They can keep it there. As long as it's not near us. So, as you can see, we got a market here. Pretty soon we'll be able to rush that as we're getting about a, as we have about a hundred. Extremely helpful. Yeah. Now our citizens are civilized, which means we have a less chance of being culturally converted. Go up here. Something's bound to be up here. I just feel feel like something's out there. Okay. So, now that I have this, oh, that's a different color. Looks like, I think I know who the, one of our, no, looks like we're about to meet another civilization, and I think I know who it is. Okay, after each time you advance in the ages, you probably should, like I'm doing, save your thing. We get, now we can make riflemen, and the texture of our roads change. Now I'm going to research a new technology. Now I could do printing press, and that means we could have Gutenberg as um, a possibility as a great person that we could get. He's actually known for making use of the printing press and converting the Bible at during which point it was at the point in which he made it. He didn't make the Bible, but at the point in which he made copies of the Bible were only written in Latin. And a lot of the people did not know how to speak Latin, as a matter of fact, throughout the medieval kingdoms. Um, probably the priest and anyone associated with the church and running of the church functions and services would actually know how to speak this language and translate the Bible. 
Um, but pretty much Gutenberg said, I'll just take this Bible, translate it into German, because that's where I'm from, and that's the language they spoke. But it wasn't actually modern-day Germany. It was actually a Germanic kingdom, which pretty much the ancestors get... Pretty much, um, area there gets taken over in many different battles, and it changes hands until eventually some loose different, like, territories form together as the actual... Germany that we know today and so forth from that time period, but um, I'm gonna start making that. I'm gonna actually rush this courthouse. I said that that is much needed. Then I'm going to make a university. We're going to have our university be ready in six turns for this place. It means that we should be making. We're making 108 science now. We should be double. We should be four times that. Actually, no. What's double? So that's 108. So if we take that in half, that should be 54. 54 will be multiplied by 4 because the times 2 that we get from our library, our library will get replaced, so then you have to times that, so that would be... So that would be, like, I think around 216. Times, I'm not good at math, but that seems about right. Now that we have that, I'm going to... Still over here. And say hello to Queen Elizabeth of the English. And they're now referring to me as president because I'm under a democracy. The way in which you refer to a leader or representative of um the different um the different um um civs. All depends upon what type of government you have. So, we're mostly focusing on building stuff. Once we get a market there, we're going to make that into a bank. And then we're going to have that start making riflemen. Now, for the longest time, you want to make riflemen. Now, the reason for this is, if you're ahead in technology, you most likely will get... Most likely get another... You will get um the chance to build Leonardo's Workshop... Ahead of time. And what that means is that if you get you get Leonardo's workshop, all of your units will be automatically updated to the latest technology. So all my archers would become pikemen, all my legions would become horsemen or whatever they would be. Warriors would become uh, legions, but then they would become horsemen and whatnot. Um, and it differs. Um, we actually have another type of horseman, which has a weird name as our unique unit. And unique units in this game tend to have the same stats as another unit. So, like, the Russians have a T-34 T as their special tank unit. It's pretty much, from from looking at it, it has the same stats as a normal tank division. It's just that it has a different name because that's the type of tanks that they um, used during World War II and the historical reasons and whatnot. This is also why I don't get why um, other civilizations have a legionaries, but they should be named something else, and we should and the unit that's in the game known as legionaries should be that should only be named that if it's a Roman unit of that type of unit. If you understand what I'm saying. Now I'm gonna have university here I'm not really sure what to do from here other than warrior armies. I'm just going to move right here because we only have one area to defend, but it only has warriors, so I'm just going to put two there just in case. Okay. Let's see what's up here. Maybe another sieve because we have found every sieve but one. Maybe it's up here along this coast on the other side of the Zulus. Probably not, I don't know. So, I think what I'm going to do now... Just keep exploring. Um, after a while when I get steamboats, I'm probably just going to sell my galley. Because it's a bit outdated. Okay, I'm really hoping I find more artifacts... 
I have a there are many different far artifacts that we could get because um because um I have like all the DLC so you get plus one culture industrialization I'm gonna go with this and get cannons. Fourteen additional great people, wonders, or converted cities, and we'll be ready to build the United Nations for a cultural victory. Increase the culture here by fifty. Sure, why not? Twenty-one. Twenty-one culture. Not doing well in the finding um new things department uh, with our exploration ships, but I'm trying my best here. Hopefully we find something. <clears throat> okay, market is done. Now, what do I need? Well... I think we are at eight. So when we level up next the city or increases in population, we will need another courthouse. That is definitely the next step to go in terms of the strategy we have here. But what I can do now is just work on a bank. Get that done. So this one actually is not doing so well. And I think I know why. So what I'm going to do is manage workers. I should have done this a turn ago. Put them there. That way we're making way more production. Because that tile now gives us three. Well, this one would only give us one. Although if we get an iron mine, we can get more production from that. But, you know, I just have to change that back myself. You gotta pay attention to details like that. Sometimes I completely miss them. And we found another artifact, another castle-like thingy. We're probably gonna get a new unit. A futuristic unit, but it's only one. So, we're now making more culture to the point where our units are now sophisticated. And it's about this time that if you are... If you are well known to your allies, they will try to, you know, say, give me this or I'll go to war with you, like a certain technology or whatnot. And I now have a tank. I don't, funny, I don't remember the Romans having access to military grade tanks, but you know, that's the whole fun of this game. You can make a civilization last longer than it is. As a matter of fact, it's way past 470. 6 AD, and the Romans are still going strong. No barbarians raiding this town. Four seventy six AD was the official um fall of Rome. In case any of you didn't know that, so just in case any of you were curious as to what went on, why I was making that, and we have the Americans as our last civilization. Hello, President Abraham Lincoln. I am President M12 LRV RVSB. Welcome. I accept your generous offer of friendship and peace. Now, eventually this won't last, and eventually we'll be like, Hey, they're getting too close to a cultural victory. Let's go to war with them to try and stop them, man. Seeing as we lead in technology, that's a good thing. So you can lead in technology, which helps you with protecting yourself when someone tries to stop you from getting any other victory, but also allows you to have better and, well, more equipped armies. Now, I could go for steam power, which is three turns, but the number one thing you want to do is probably get... I probably want to get steam power. Now, corporation, if you just build the military-industrial complex, reduces the amount of... Um, reduce, dramatically reduces the cost by a little bit for each of your ships, but I'm not going to do that. Now, what I'm going to do is that your threats do not frighten us. And they just declared war on me! Wonder what? That's not surprising. This is the 
point in time where I said said that we where where someone would go to war with us if we didn't give them technologies. And you want to know what? When I build an ICBM, as a matter of fact, they can only access to me by water. They would have to go to war with either. Um, they'd either have to go to war with the Indians or the Zulu in order to get at us. And, well, you want to know what? Either that or they have to get themselves a Navy. And it looks like they don't have much just based on the technology bases. So now that we have that done, I can build anything. Like, literally, what do I want to build? Wonder what? I'll just go with Wonders. Great wall. Six turns. Why not? If no one researches a certain technology in time before I do that, it's actually worth it and they'll go back to being at peace with us. So! Now that we have this, that is a Zulu galley. There are allies. But you want to know who isn't? Is Queen Elizabeth and their army. Now I have steam power. So you wanna know what that means? We have access to steam powered things. Now I'm gonna actually go and research atomic theory. Now that's an important thing to get. Atomic theory. Bank. We can rush that. Okay. Now we have that going for us. Riflemen, every two turns. We're gonna spam out a bunch of them. We're gonna have extra ones that we can load onto a ship. That'll be our war fleet. So, we got a free carrier here. Once we finish Great Walls, we're gonna start building a navy in Rome. Someone declared war on us, and we are gonna show them to the fullest extent of our power what we exactly intend to do with this. Now I just realized... In this city that we have a better way of getting things done as I can put another unit here which gives us more production here okay now I'm gonna try and customize it again let's see how much do we have Oh, we don't have any more. Wait, why does it say that? Oh, those little banners there are indicators that we have great people there, but not so much people actually working within the city. Although that's what it usually means. So, now that we have um, riflemen armies being done there, I being built in Antium, I'm going to do that. I'm going to leave my cruiser station there. We're going to build two more, make that into a fleet, and this galleon, pretty much going to go right down here. Oh, it can't do that because of that um, other unit. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a mini blockade. Now, for those of you who do not know, that, um, that, um, I've learned this in U.S. history, that the blockading of any port is considered an automatic act of war against us. Fun little fact, but I'm gonna settle him there, which increases, um, decreases the cost production for all buildings. No, nope, buildings are different from wonders. Wonders are different, but it don't matter as we get an ability once we reach a certain age where the cost of wonders decrease by half. Now, one whether or not that um, will stack with any other bonuses we get, probably not, because then it'd be like then it'd be like for a stone hedge. Although we wouldn't be able to. Although if we had that. If we still have the ability to build a stone hedge this late in the game, probably not an option as um stone hedge. That's that's an ancient wonder. Someone's gonna build it. And if you have the Egyptians, they start off with one ancient wonder. Chances are they probably picked that for whatever reason. 
So pretty much what I'm doing here is if I get another ship to place right in any water port that borders the town, it has to be directly bordering it. It can't be if I were to set this to custom, as you can see here what I have selected, it can't be that. It can be these three areas right here, but it will not spawn in this area as, as far as I know because it's not directly touching the town. Well, I guess... Yeah, because this is, this is, but this is not, nor would this be. Although we are getting a lot of science from that tile. So, up here, as I'm going to show you. We are at war with them. And if you open up the diplomacy menu, you can see they have a red flag. And that they hate us. And that they're at war with us. So... What will we do to stop them in the next? In, in what will we do to stop them in the next phase? We don't. I do not know, but I do know one thing. That I'm gonna have to end this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, don't forget to leave any comments, questions, or feedback for me in the comment section down below. And then on the off chance that I get a major huge lead against, uh, um, um, against um all the other sieves, I may have the option to stick around in the game. And get whatever, and I pretty much will have the chance to choose whichever four um um victories that you want me to um get. If you want to leave a suggestion for that, otherwise, if if there's no other option, like they're gonna win before me unless I go for this set victory, which I'm the closest to getting to, then I'm gonna have to go for that. So leave suggestions, feedback, and whatnot, and also tell me what other games you want me to give strategic analysis on for my strategy guide series as well. Anyway, guys. I'm going to have to end this. Anyway, guys, I'm going to have to um, end video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.